Welcome back, folks, to the final game of today's Group D matches. That's right, we've got EG versus Na'Vi going down to the line. We need a game three to decide who comes out ahead. And I, honestly, I don't know what to think, Lacoste. One side, you got a Viper, the other, you got a Troll and a Magnus. And suddenly, we're back in business. If you had to play on one team, which one would you pick? Considering the two picks that we see right now. Oh, okay. I thought I, I thought we were getting deeper than that and more personal. Oh, no, no, no. All right. Based on Just the, the basic stuff. All right. I'm going to go with EGs because so far the Oracle has been the saving grace and winning factor on either side. Like, the, it's been ridiculous how useful this hero has been. I love Oracle. This hero seems... <laughs> I'm not going to say broken because if you have a good... Heroes that can close the gap, uh, multiple heroes. He he feels weak, but um, Viper. He's the hero that builds into Guardian Greaves. Then you benefit from uh, from it so much with the ulti. I mean, it's just... On the other side, you have Magnus and Troll. So this means that he can skip the Battle Fury build, which I'm not a big fan of, and uh, he can build into that uh, S and Y. You have got the issue that you're countered somewhat by the Viper, right? Not just because of the Viper Strike, but because of that Never Toxin just removing your passive. So BKB is critical in this game for a start. Yeah, so I assume in this game when you're playing against Viper, you have Magnus on your side, SNY, maybe a casual Mask into BKB, and then you can fight with the Demon. You come online so fast. I can see a ban on the Razor by EG. Maybe more to do with the Viper pick, just securing that, right? Because you, it's a slow hero. You can chase him down and sap away a lot of damage. Then we'll go, okay. This has been something that was popular for a bit, disappeared. Seems to be resurging as a kind of synergetic choice with the troll more than anything else, right? With that attack yeah. speed build up, the extra slows. They play the same thing in game number one. We see, we saw how it can be effective during the laning stage. Tag team, slow from Troll Warlord, and uh, a lot of damage, a lot of kill potential. I don't think where you actually want to go if you're EG right now. I mean, Oracle doesn't do too bad against the task. You maybe want something with an escape mechanism. Do we see something similar to before where they have this type of hero that can just dodge out the shards? Yeah, I assume they're gonna go for something like it. They don't have the best, uh, the best control right now on uh, on side of Navi. Like you have RP, which is big cooldown. If you get that Ember Spirit, Marana, Queen of Pain, Pucks, which are not influenced by task rotations, uh, you can also put Viper on the side lane. It can also be played as an off lane, but. You need to have a reliable stun from your position for then. We'll see the shaman coming out. Another pretty effective pick throughout this series. And you know what? I think Arteezy has it right with this one. He's on point. I mean, I'm assuming it's a team discussion, not just Arteezy demanding and saying what he wants is going to get picked. We are going to see the Bane coming out. And this isn't really for the Enfeeble combos right now, because you don't have much to sync that up with at this point in Na'Vi's draft, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's still a strong laner. Have a BKB person ability. Fiend's Grip, always strong, especially if you have front liners and you're going to have a couple in this game, which means uh, Magnus is going to be position three. I thought maybe they want to swap things around, have uh, Tusk as uh, five, Magnus as position four. But the, the hero is still good, especially if you build those team fighting items. No way to lock down Tide. Not not a single hero can bring him down. So good pickup. They already showed their supports, which means that they can't lock him down. Also, Magnus is going to be their off lane, which means they can't pick Doom. A couple of heroes can only lock down Tide. It's Faceless Void, Disruptor. Doombringer, and I think I'm forgetting one. Um, there is one of them. Ah, that's enough of them. Black Hole, yes, yes. Enigma. Enigma. All right, so. Anyways, 
Um, so right now, there's oh. just a huge focus. Like they basically more or less pigeonholed the troll into having to go beat KB. There's no flexibility. Are you self promoting? <laughs> no, I just it's a statement I use. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no, you get the Night Stalker as well, right? Because the silence persists now. But I don't know if you'd want to run a Night Stalker in this lineup. I don't think so. It could be... Uh... I mean, nah. Yeah, where would nah, you run it? Doesn't mid, sound good. maybe, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't no. I'm not sold on, on Midnight Stalker in this type of lineup. Just get pressured a little bit too hard. So Final Focus is coming out. And EG... Well, they could flex, right? They could put this Viper mid, you could put it in the out lanes. I'd say the same with the troll for Na'Vi, though. So, EG are going to be the first ones to reveal their true plans. There is going to be a Morphling ban coming out from Na'Vi. I can see the I can see the reasons for that. Like, with the Oracle there as well, there's easy ways to save the Morphling and make sure he can dominate these fights. Yeah, I feel like they need a hero that Oracle can save, because if saving Viper, saving Tidehunter, Shadow Shaman, it doesn't feel that great. What do you think Na'Vi's looking towards here? Like, without seeing that farm pick? Because you're probably going to get a Viper uh, matchup, right? OD. OD is great against uh, this type of a lineup. You build into four staff naturally, which is save. You have Astral, great against Shadow Shaman. You can deal with uh, Tidehunter easily. And uh, you build a BKB. Once you get that BKB, you're pretty much uh, unkillable. So I think they might uh, they might ban uh, OD. Yeah, logical choice. Five seconds remain to make that decision. And then what would be the backup? Like, Na'Vi, they have to anticipate that's like to happen. There it is. I don't think this, this shouldn't be a mid-pick for me. I expect they've already got the Viper for that role, so probably looking towards the carry. Yeah, and the OD is great. One point that I didn't make. Extremely good against Oracle. Like, you pop his ulti on a hero, trying to save him, and if OD is in the front line, he just keeps hitting you. And you do not want to waste time running back while you have Oracle ulti. True. You're basically just so a giant feeding pack for them. Yes. Same goes for Dazzle. Pretty much the same concept. True. Uh, other heroes like that, like Slark's another one of that example. Just great. Going to stack more essence before you actually go pop. Don't expect to see a Slark in Na'Vi's lineup, though. I think there's maybe a little bit too much lockdown. There's a Spectre, though. Okay, so EG, they're just yeah. trying to cruise out this mid game and make sure that they can just dominate the late game. That's the hero that you want to save. And the... Uh... Viper being out of the pool means that uh, nothing here kind of builds into items that can break the Spectre. Troll might get Silver Edge at one point. It's good against Tidehunter, good against Spectre, good against Viper. So he might actually consider getting, getting one in this game. Definitely a lot of justification. So Na'Vi, do they want to secure a late game scenario if they get forced there? Or do they want to try and aim for a mid game finish point? Yeah, I feel like they need more of a hero that can scale because you can't really rely on just a troll and your Magnus is not going to be that good of a scaling hero because you need to run uh, around the troll and buff him up. So something that can benefit from Empower. Otherwise, there's no real usage of Magnus in this game. Go for the Alk. Okay, so a hero that can benefit from the Empower but also farms rapidly on its own. Yeah, so the battle of late game. I mean, we said that they need something that can keep up with the Spectre's farm, with Viper's farm in the late game, and uh, Alchemist is going to be that one. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. EG seem to have a big focus on sustain, uh, whereas Na'Vi have gone for this more greedy accelerated lineup right they're, they're aiming to get six slotted a lot quicker than eg and flip that advantage so do eg have to play this early mid game a lot more aggressively not necessarily they can still put a lot of aggression laning stage viper is gonna farm in the jungle nevertheless and uh, farming specter that's that's i mean specter's always uh your hero you can rely on in the late game. So other four just need to play aggressive and buy time for Spectre. And every time Ravage is up, Shadow Shaman Ulti is up, uh, 
they can group up and take a fight. Alchemist is not going to get Radiance, uh, even if he has ideal game, probably be before 12 minute mark. And uh, Spectre can use the Haunt a couple of times, grab some kills, continue farming. Uh, so I'm not going to say that the Navi's lineup is bad. Um, oh, it feels like this Alchemist, at least from what I saw in this patch, it's not that great of a pick. At least from the games that I saw, I'm not convinced yet. It feels like he gets overrun most of the time, especially if his tier one tower falls and uh, you have a shadow shaman, so he might not have have an easy time. Definitely a fair point to be made there. I mean, we saw Chaos try and run it earlier today and the, the overwhelming aggression. And we're talking about lineup. You said the spec of the global presence. You've got a Viper that's going to look to fight pretty early if he gets the opportunity. And, and you're talking about a lineup that has a shaman who's always going to be pushing. And I guess the big concern for Na'Vi is you've taken this Empower, you've taken this this Alchemist. You need a lot of the map, and there's a question as to whether EG are going to give you the time to actually lock down that farm, to actually have control of your own jungle. Those tuning in, the score is 1-1. One, one. That means whoever wins this goes into the upper bracket to face He's off against gone. Vici tomorrow. The good old GSL. Honestly, with what we've seen so far from these two, this could genuinely go either way. Draft-wise, like you said, the Alchemist is going to be the biggest question mark out of anything here. It is an unproven variable. Depends if they can get some stacks running for him in the jungle. His laning stage. We are going to see this matchup. Wiper against Alchemist. So a lot of... Uh, that green slime is going to be on the mid lane. Exchanging, of course, so back and forth. Oh, yeah. As you do. Once he's just looking to secure this rune. Probably the dagger as well, just to slow down the Seneca. And Blizzy, does he level into the skewer? He doesn't want to have to. He's going to try and grab this. Does manage to get his hands on it. Takes a decent amount of damage out of it. Yeah, EG realizes that they have... Alchemist, so he's just going to be blocking the mid lane. They bring Viper as well to try to secure some more bounties for themselves. If they were clicking fast enough, if they had better mouses, they could have grabbed the four bounty runes, steal it away from Alchemist, and it would be a huge, huge advantage for them. True. If they just had Corsair mouses, that would be the dream. But in the end, out gets the smart goal to begin with. And we will probably see that Soaring coming up pretty rapidly. This is a weird lane as well because both of these guys can fall back to the jungle. The question is, which team has the supports that can punish that? Well, they, both of them might actually farm the lane because we've seen Vipers not getting more than one point in Poison stack. We'll see how Samelda decides to play this matchup. All right, so, so far, no... Points in Poison Stack, just wishes to have a Corrosive Skin, some extra magic resistance, even though Acid Spray is physical. So it's not the greatest. It's just a little bit extra DPS out when they attack you, of course. Yeah. And you can kind of skirt that with the Acid Spray. That's kind of one of the values you get out of Viper, is if you're up against these heroes with low damage AoEs, you can exploit that on the edge. Yeah. I mean, it still procs the Corrosive, uh, corrosive Skin, nevertheless, but... Uh... The damage is negligible in comparison. You already see Viper actually taking a lot of damage in this lane. But they've got plenty of regen between the two of them. Focus on the other lanes. We're going to have a troll versus a tide. and This feels like a lane that's going to be hard to see kills on either side. Yeah. So is the bot lane the one we're looking towards for some aggression, perhaps? It just feels like all these lanes are very passive, right? They are indeed. Like, there's not too much kill potential from Mag and Bane unless they get a skewer on Oracle. Spectre is just going to be able to run away with the dagger, has a stout shield. They Top really can't kill her. Top lane. Just as we say, these lanes should be pretty passive. In the end, it's actually Na'Vi that strike first to find a kill onto, well, definitely the most tanky individual in EG's lineup. The good thing for EG is the bottom lane. They don't have too much kill potential. Uh, Fly has uh, both of these camps free, so he can uh, try pulling them, unless Sona Eco is pulling those. 
That's the beauty of the way they changed this uh, this side of the map. Much easier for the offlane to pull through as well. In fact, I don't know about you. I often find myself just pulling here and here either side, whether I'm raiding or dire. It's such a simple pull now. Can easily be interrupted though. Depends on the heroes you have. Yep. Wiper kind of dominating the, the mid lane. Has Arcane Rune. Just spitting that Nether Toxin on him. He needs to stay out of a Acid Spray. Oh, well, lane. So Flies Alchemist can, can use Flask. Alright, I didn't see what happened there. I was just checking if Alchemist can die on a mid lane. I mean, it's a fair point, right? Like, you don't expect to see that kill happening. You're just kind of... I think the most intriguing thing you expect to see in this early game is who's going to be able to farm more efficiently, the Alk or the Viper. Yeah, I mean, Skewer is not on cooldown. That's why I'm surprised that the Fly died. It looked like he was Did a little bit what too... happened? I mean, I caught just the end of it. It looked like he was being aggressive. He was stuck in the creep wave trying to escape it. I mean, yeah, if you don't control your hero, you're probably going to die. Just, you know, click your hero somewhere in the lane and go for a, for a toilet break. Sometimes you just feel bad about pausing. You, know? you don't want to ruin the action for all the spectators. Your fans, they want to see action. Uh, as I say that... What? What is going on with this bot lane? Seneco just went down. This feels like a lot of mispositioning coming out. Oh, Raging Rune. Fly is going to save that for Sumail. And Magical That's going to be so huge. That as well. He has to use his salve instead. Even on the top lane. They're getting aggressive on the S4. They're going to slow him down with the Whirling Axes after he just gets the debuff. He's getting pretty low. He's shot coming out. Shackles as well. Going to lock Tusk in place. And Crit says go. Don't get too aggressive here, S4. Salve up and stay alive. I'm surprised Tidehunter doesn't have a single point. Gosh. Bruce, especially so with... Yeah, Shadow Shaman's yeah. base damage. He hits pretty hard. Now, speaking of that Shaman, they shot him in, but he turns around the shackle and Tusk. Game pretty low. Welling Axe coming out. Eve Shot gets the kill on Crit. He's going to run away from Crystallize. Needs to be careful, actually, because he might turn around. Doesn't have enough mana for an Eve Shock, so Crystallize will be fine. Yeah, because Tidehunter right now has a lot of mana that is unspent. And with that Gush, that would probably be a, a kill on Troll Warlord. Runes are going to spawn. They want to... Contest. I'm gonna grab as many as possible, considering there's Alchemist on their team. One, two, two for EG right now, and uh, two, two, two in the end. Plus, they got a kill on Fly. Yeah, Fly was trying to just snatch one away. Did pay the ultimate price for it. And it's quite funny the way to play that as well. Blizzy didn't even go for the kill first of all. He just held him in the nightmare, tried to actually go and snatch a rune from right under Artizi's nose. Viper is backstabbing here. I won't make a plan of magical. It's a little bit far out. There's the Viper Strike. We'll slow him down. The Nevtoxin as well. And the Shackle is stuck in here. He's dead. Big pick off. Probably the biggest one that EG can find on this map, actually. Yep. Well, both Vipers and the Alchemists love to be in jungle. But the Viper kind of dominated the lane. And now he decides to go to jungle and give free lane for crit. Which means that the Alchemist is going to... Go back in his triangle, just try to keep farm there, uh, but that's going to benefit EG so much more. Getting levels on Shadow Shaman, getting items on this hero, so much more valuable than, let's say, getting items on Bane or Position 4 Tusk. Yeah, like, th there's a clear correlation in objectives from XP and gold perspectives for the Shaman, right? You can get killed and drop wards and take a tap. Harder to do that with the side of Na'Vi. You don't have that big ultimate that enables a push. And got a preview in the top lane of just how close S4 can skirt the line. He did almost get dropped, but because he's dealing with a Tusk who's melee and Crystallize wanted to be in melee for the roots as well, this Anchor Smash just negates any ability for them to find kills on him. He did skirt the line there. In fact, I think he got away on about 40 HP. You know, thread the needle. And Bane, Bane can see us against Shadow this thing while he was in the mid lane. No points in the Enfeeble. It's not like you can slow him down to Lever. Can't really trade. And S4. Oh, they've caught him off with the shards. He's got Anchor Smash coming off cooldown. Let's move in. Trying to reduce damage. Chris Lies. Shackles is going to be there. And now Pings come out. Flies here as well. The Haunt. They're going to jump straight in. Looking on the Chew. Want to get rid of him first. Maybe we forward on the Crystallize, but he's already backing up. And he's Spectre's going to farm up top a little bit. And the TP on the bottom lane. Lane is pushing in. And that will give space for Blizzy to get a little bit more gold. He is the best performing core on the side of Na'Vi right now. Which, you know, thumbs up. He's top of net worth. But it's also concerning that you've got an Alchemist that isn't top of net worth. 
Definitely not the way you want to see this hero playing out. Oh, five to strike interrupted, but they take it off as Sumel will pursue forward. Looking on a Seneca, gonna get pretty low. Ice shards blocks him in, but he may have done enough damage. He needs one more hit, but can't find it in crit. Nope. Couldn't get the Ether Shock out. Seneco's gonna stay alive. It's only level two Ether Shot, plus he had fairy fire to work with, so Bane was fine in the end though. The important thing is they can't pressure Spectre, and you do not want to give Spectre an easy lane. Right now she's sitting on 36 CS, and who's gonna rotate? Like your Bane is level four. You need to bring Tusk Bane plus one. Magnus has level 6 still doesn't have rp skilled but uh, they need to bring three people to kill this specter they need to do it soon you know this is a type of hero that is designed to have a rough lane yeah. because of how powerful it is later eg needs to place some boards on specter's lane either on high ground to see the rotations coming out from the tower or just place it in the lane not easy finds two just back away Seneco has got the nightmare they've got the rp Gonna go for the skewer nope. back, but they don't no have the team. damage. Yep, that's why I said they need three heroes. He's definitely not gonna die. They didn't listen. And as a result, they reveal what they were doing, and that means they've got less people guarding top. You can already see Sumail moving in, but Crystal Life, he's quick to back away. All the concern, all this time, I'm just looking at the mid. I'm just looking at the fact that Crit now has six, and they could easily just transition to a push in the mid lane. Crystal Life is gonna be fresh to TP back to base, and that frees up the top lane to push, and Chew is here alone. Also, Tidehunter just hit level 6, yeah. but doesn't have a point in Ravage because I mean, he's he doesn't need it. Mana. Yep. Two. He might go for the TP now, and there's no mana actually, so he will get out. Nice escape, but he leaves behind a tower that they could easily push onto. They lost the vision. Shadow Shaman is going to push that uh, mid lane. Serpent Fords are ready. I guess he's waiting for Catapult. Uh... And the kind of thing to like note here is while getting these kills would be nice for EG at the same time, at this stage in the game, when the XP is so crucial, when you're trying to reach those level sixes, forcing them back to base wastes valuable time for Na'Vi. Yeah, glyph on glyph action on a mid lane. You pop a glyph to save your tower, but then he pops it, so saves its creeps. This tower is going to go down. You can see Sumail already trying to backstab. Yeah, there's no way to stop runes. them. We'll secure oh, the runes. It's going to be four runes. This is going to for Na'Vi. Oh, but Bane being slowed down. Maybe it won't be Fly. No! He's just quick enough. Oh, no win lays is needed. The difference is he has boots and Seneco does not. Need more bot lane. RP coming out. Looking onto the Spectre here. Wants to try and get him Snowball as well. He needs to escape with the Horn. He'll get he's away. Gone. He goes to the top lane and now he's going to turn it into a kill as Bane is held on the spot. They say thank you for revealing your entire team and enabling an easy push in the top lane. <laughs> That's how you play Spectre. Nicely done by Arteezy. Dodging the gank, getting the last hit on the tower. Didn't get a last hit on uh, on a hero, but is going to continue to free farm. There's no RP, which means that Navi can't play aggressive. Uh, Bane's grip ready. He just hit level 6. Yeah, But EG is going to play aggressive. They know that they need to pressure this alchemy. He farmed 2,000 gold. Ravage is up. Uh, so they can try to go for tier 2 towers. Road of Athos is finished on viper he just needs to use the courier s4 hadn't actually leveled the ravage at six he's holding on as soon as he saw that the rp was down he says okay now we want to go for these team fights you can already see it they're ready to invade they're smoked up they're gonna go in and Seneco's gonna break that smoke we'll allow the alchemist to escape but he won't be so lucky he will go down takes a little bit of time but it's inevitable yeah i'm surprised dragons didn't get to get there they tried try as they might s4 just sees them and now you can farm them up with the anchor smash as well a lot of farm on the bottom lane. Spectre has a TP. He's trying to pressure magical, interestingly enough. You can appreciate it, but how do you slow him? You don't really stop out from farm by staying there. <laughs> no. Crit is in the bot lane. They're pinging it out. They could go for the snowball in, but they don't have the wars punch afterwards. So they have to be quick with this kill. It's got a stick as well, so you could get the mana to drop the serpent wards. This is why I don't like magnus as position three because you still need to r run around your cores and buff him up and position four magnus does this way better because you have a core who's not gonna scale that much that was kind of my concern is like if you pick magnus you need to pick enough heroes to justify it but if you pick two melee heroes that's two that you're basically babysitting two kids right you just got you know they need their diapers changed they need the bottle you're gonna run around back and forth it's like being the babysitter, but you're not allowed to have the kids in the same room. They have to be on the other side yeah. of the house. Uh, that's what I'm doing when I'm tri-casting with Dakota and Grand during King's Cup. 
Go balance it. It's okay. You make you make a good surrogate death father, all right? Seems kind of oddly, ironically fitting that Dakota <laughs> named his kids Dominic. Yeah, I don't know where he got the name from. Sounds like a good name. One of the best, I would say. I don't, I don't know if I'd stretch it that far, but I, it, okay, it's a cute baby. Yes, one of the best names. You win. Paul is sitting pretty deep this whole time. This man has no fears right now. He's actually just sapping XP away from Magical. You really see actually the position from EG. They've invaded the entirety of the Dire Jungle. And while Na'Vi is finding farm, they're finding it in an inefficient location because this puts you so far away from the pit. Yeah. Spectre realizes there's there's a lot of people on the bot lane. Uh, she's just farming the top side of the map. The boards are going to be used. RP. RP coming out. And now the Hornet as well going to get trolled low battle trance just in time. He gets himself out of the wards because of that push out. And now Atos on the side. Magnus will fall. Crystallized kite out will go down with him. That was their initiation. Every time these haunts screw up the initiation, the RPs from Na'Vi. Yeah, it also shows where the rest of the team is. So you can easily outnumber them. TP if it's uh, needed. Magical so close to getting that sacred relic. Yeah, you could, you could see the move as well. S4 was trying to find him. He went so aggressive there. Instead, he'll just snatch away his stacks. You can see oh, RT's already dream. pushing him Golems. God bless. Hide. Farming so well. Now, Shackle is coming out in the mid lane. Zaneko, he might have level 6 now, but he's not getting a chance to use it. Another tower falls, and this was someone we highlighted at the beginning, is, is Na'Vi need a lot of the map to get their value out of this Magnus. They're I love running the Golden Spectre. Yeah. Power Threads, Magic Wand, two Raid Bands. And a race. Straight into Radiance, because she wants to scale, and the other four guys on his team can play aggressive. They, they're they also playing against Alchemist, which means that uh, he wants to farm that Radiance, and they can see him farming, which means that uh, he's close to it, but does not have it yet. Instead, they find Magnus farming as well, and they punish him straight away. Nice smoke rotation, moving towards top as well. Magical might get the occasional CS, but you can just see this urgency. You can see the way he has to move. He has to be on the run so often. Now they grab three bounty runes. Oh, they'll get you, though. For themselves, plus a kill. This is all looking EG. I, I have to say, every single time I see Alchemist, he just loses the game. And if you're not 10,000 gold ahead, you're not ahead. That's the thing. It's deceptive, right? Oh, great. Look, Alk, he's... Got 300 gold lead on the, the closest competitor from his opponent's team. It's like, yeah, but it's it's an alchemist, guys. That guy should be two, three thousand gold ahead by this point at least. Dead. He's got his radiance recipe. He's almost completed the relic now as well. When we look across at Arteezy. He's about to have his relic, so he's not really that far behind. Yeah, he's only recipe away from his radiance. Which one has a bigger impact in the, at this stage of the game, right? <laughs> Do I have to answer that one? Um, you can just answer it with the eternal screams of the alchemist as he dies. That's what's going to happen will. here. I mean, like... I will. I mean, he doesn't even have a level 2 chemical rage. I don't think he survives a horn gang. Don't quote me, but I'm almost 100% sure. I don't like to throw out those numbers. I'm not a stat man, as you know, Lacoste. What are you? Um... I'm a seeker of blood sports. You know? It's like, I just like to shout, get excited, scream like a little girl occasionally. Apparently, you get paid for that. Wait, are you getting paid for this? Uh, no. no, no. Not at all. Oh, and a uh, price is being paid by Fly for being so aggressive. The false promise comes out. They'll be able to heal up. Should stay alive, and she will go for the TP away. In fairness, that was EG's move to make, so Na'Vi will be happy with that. So, um, yeah, we, we, we'll pay you in monster cats? I don't know. In-game items? Yes, we will give you unlimited PZZ sets. <laughs> well, if it's a golden one, it's extremely expensive. Sorry, no, no gold, no gold. Um, gold, but not that rich. S4? Okay, skew attempt not quite hidden. Chu has got the shards, though, although how heavily do you commit onto this Tide Hunter? They might realize no one else is here with him. He's going to run around. Oh, the play. He turns back like he has a full team behind him. Look at him playing so <laughs> aggressive. He's going so deep, and he does have a team behind him now. Sumel's arrived as well. The Ravage goes out. Troll in trouble. Getting pretty low. Can't get the Battle Trance out. 
And they can actually push on this tower. They're so tanky between the two of them. And your alchemist doesn't want to fight. He's on the radiant side of the map farming. <laughs> Man, as for with the with the plays, some extremely good mind games going on right now. Alchemist has that uh, radiance uh, managed to farm up uh, ultimate orb on top of it. Hmm. But Spectre has radiance finished. Haunt is ready. I I don't think they want to fight right now. They could still uh, go for Roche. Oh, they Shadow are. Shaman with the uh, Mass Serpent Wards. Dropping it down. Drop like it's hot. S4 wants to get maybe a second light. I think you probably give it across to Sumel. I don't know if S4 needs it. But then again, I mean, we saw how deep he went without an Aegis. Like, I mean, Spectre's gonna pick it up. Oh, they commit the RP. They skewed him back, but the horse gonna come out as well. Now they can move into initiate on this. Sumel getting pretty low. He's gonna mech up, stay alive. RTZ spack stabs the back line. Bane getting pretty low. Let me wait. Eva shot melts through them. Now the battle trans, but no. Sumel's gonna stay alive. Look at that HP. The grip. false promise just in time. The grip not doing enough though. Spectre just burning them all down. And EG sacrifice one to take the many as free die from Na'Vi, and all they give over is a scary. I don't even know what I'd actually call Viper. Dragon Man. Let's call him a dragon. It's a flying snake. Flying snake. There we go. We'll go with that. That's All right. There's a region rune, so they might uh, want to go into Roche Pit again. If S4 finishes his Desso and he's just 200 gold away from it, that's going to give him an easy time getting the oh. Roche. Blizzy? Blizzy's been found. Crew was just walking by and he found a surprise. Oh dear, oh dear. It looked like Blizzy was trying to cut the wave under their scheme. I don't know any other reason to be there. Did he have a TP? Yeah, he had a TP available. Now? And Crit is playing out of his mind this game. 14 out of 17 kills. Uh, participation. Didn't die once. Level 12 as Shadow Shum. 20 minutes and has a Blink Dagger and four staff. Keep it up. He almost has enough money for it. He's going to pop it. Come on, steal it. For comparison, by the way, Lizzie is level 11, Crystallize is level 10, and as you just said, Crit level 12. He's not scared of anything in this game. Oh, Spectre did spot out Seneco. The Nightmare's going to be there. Meanwhile, Oracle gets found in the top lane trying to secure some bounty runes. Seneco will fall in the bot lane as RTZ slowly chases him down. He'll beg for his life, but no one can hear you scream in the Radiant Jungle. Oh, the neutral creep! The Hellbear got him. Hellbear does smash indeed. Arteezy robbed of the gold he felt he justly deserved. It's a tough game for Navi. They might need to stall this one for <laughs> How long? another 20, 40 minutes if, if they want to win it. All right, 20, 40, that, you know, 20, 40 minutes, that's not much, okay? That's just two times 10 minutes, you know, times 20 minutes. It's, it's not too much. Oh, uh, this is painful though. Alchemist, that's the kill you can't afford to give over and they just found him. The mana doesn't get him out. Now they'll just push for the high ground. They've got a cap pot as well, and S4 will tank the entirety of the damage coming out from that tier 3. Oracle saving Tom of Knowledge until he hits that level 10 XP gain, then he's gonna pop it. Feel like a god at that stage. I wonder if S4 will go for the XP gain at level 15. I mean, he's snowballing out of control. This entire lineup of EG right now is snowballing out of control. Pretty rough for the Tuster to here, considering he's meant to be master of snow. Come on, S4, you need to hit the range racks as well to get the maximum efficiency from that death. So hit once. Nah, he doesn't care. He's like, all right. Oh, we'll just toy with him. We're buying it. time so Arteezy <laughs> can arrive after he takes the tier two. That's what this is. Nightmare coming out on the tide. We'll slow down his push, but Sumel still hits and the catapult is still alive. All the while, Arteezy is just here, ready to go. He has an Aegis, he has the Exorcism to, uh, Exorcism to Haunt, rather, to work with. Oh, skew up. Blink away in time. And it looks like someone might stun himself. Magical needs to turn around, but he doesn't even risk it. Tries to the mana dodge. Fails and S4. He's got the Ravage. He's getting ready, but the snowball comes out. Tusk is trying to move away from this. Drags S4 even deeper. Says, thank you very much. I want to get closer for the five-man Ravage. Magical will not cue the stun for too long, but RTZ is in your base now. He's joined in. They can move straight to bot after this, and they will do so. They have no ways of locking the Tide Hunt. Get his Ravage off... If they try to initiate. So Navi is in a really tough spot right now. They need to do something, but they really can't. They need to do something very big. And S4 might be the one to do it instead. He's got the Ravage ready. Snowball's going to come out. Rolling through. Straight across onto Crit. Wars Punch in the air, but Chew's already dead. Buyback does come out. Just needs to hold this. Magical activates the Chemical Rage. Charging up the stun right now. Throws it across onto S4. 
They still can't touch this Spectre. He is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, if they don't get him out now, they're never leaving. That's the big problem. The wars go down, and now you're in trouble. Glyph activated. Arteezy not really feeling the damage just yet. Going through those illusions. Be a second lane going, and if you, if you have to be very careful because if you slip up once as Navi, it's not just two lanes; it'll be three. In fact, EG might just go for the third. How greedy are they feeling? Yep, they yeah. <laughs> took the tier two tower on the top, which uh -oh. means they can go for tier threes right now. And uh, Tide Hunter just runs away. I mean, you skewer him back. All you're doing is encouraging a ravage, and that's why they're hesitant to do anything about him. Free blink dagger, skewer him back into your team. <laughs> Oh, magical. Gonna move away with the chemical ray. Does give that dispel to get out of the Atos. Just taking these damage. Vibe Strike's gonna be on the side. Crystallize being cut out. Magical down to half HP already. Done on the spot. Charging up the stun right now. The Battle Trance just in time. Patrol really low on HP. Shaman. Hex is not looking to be way off. He connects on two, but now the Ravage. No! He was free to go. And S4 locks him on the spot. The Thought's gonna be used. And now Fiveback's coming out for the troll and the Magnus as well. But no, they have lost Magical. And with it, GG comes out. EG in dominant fashion take this deciding game between the two teams yeah this is just perfect game and the uh, draft from eg they played it extremely well hunted down alchemist in the jungle delaying his radiance specter almost got the same timing on radiance as alchemist that's pretty insane also i gotta give credit once again to shadow shaman crit played extremely well the atomization was on point that they so actually allowed them to siege these buildings so quickly and uh, it, it's it's just an outplay from the start they i didn't like this uh, alchemist pick from navi and uh, i mean we can we can sh we can see why i saw like six or seven games of alchemist in the past uh, two weeks and i i think they lost uh, every single game yeah, it's definitely not impressed today, and maybe we'll continue to do so. I think the problem is you see these lineups that are really focused on just storming out of the lane and taking control of the map as quickly as possible. And it's, it just seems like Alchemist, like, what do you do against that? You just want time to farm. It's a little bit too greedy. A little bit too vulnerable, maybe. But that does mean we're done. That does mean EG will go through up against Vici Gaming, and that does also mean that you're going to see Na'Vi face off against chaos esports club i believe let me check the schedule because we are starting same time tomorrow as today and we will start off with the upper bracket with vici versus eg pretty hype i'm excited i mean who wouldn't be right we've seen some pretty good games from eg and vici yeah. looking so hot so far definitely i, I think that's gonna be one of the interesting uh, series we're gonna see tomorrow in general and uh, Vici showed some extremely good performance uh, during minor and uh, today as well. Pretty convincing games uh, so far. But uh, EG is not to be underestimated. They always somehow their weasel in, always get into top three no matter what. The kings of lower bracket, I'm not sure if VG is going to send them there, but it's going to be pretty hype watching those games. Yep. Coming off the back and winning the minor, and in fairness, they've done it in dominant fashion. It was Creo, I believe, against Gambit. You, know, you can't underestimate them because there is an argument towards the momentum a team carries from that kind of thing. And at the same time, you know, you're playing so much Dota if you include the minor. Maybe it is an advice. I don't know. Maybe the secret solution here, Lacoste, is to go through the minor and win the majors. That's how. That's how it was meant to work. That's how it was drafted out. Yeah, <laughs> hasn't worked out for the minor team so far, but maybe, maybe Vici can do something. Well. That does mean we're done, folks. That does mean you can go get some rest, some recuperation. I'm not quite sure if any game's going on in the other channels. I know that the mainstream is done for the day. Uh, they had some pretty brutal stomps. I believe they had a 2-0 from Team Secret on Keen, and then also Team Liquid 2-0 Jay Storm. Just looking at, I believe, E-Home versus Mineski might still be going on with Mineski one game up, and LGD versus Infamous might still be going on with a one game uh, going the way of LGD. But that's us done. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time. That's right. It's going to be 1.30 p.m. CET. We'll be kicking off with Vici versus EG. Don't want to miss it. Make sure you're there. See you then.